Get into it here, gang. No. Speaking of FDL versus Wings. <laughs> Thank God we're gonna have to talk about how this game is gonna be not close. Yeah. Not close. Now, but I, I wanted. MSS said that he he said he thought Wings looks a little. I think it looks shaky is the word he used right sure. now. And uh, I I wouldn't have said that coming into this. So I'm actually intrigued by by that analysis from an NA player. I mean, they've they've lost some games, you know. Like they've lost some games against teams that are arguably like definitely tier two Chinese. They like they they may, maybe didn't even make it to regional qualifiers, kind of a thing. So yeah. I, I think they're trying new stuff out. Um, I think right. they're. They're testing the meta. Most of the heroes that they abused and, and used while at TI are gone. Maybe not abused isn't the right word, but because they had such a wide hero pool, but they could be different. And FDL, man, they, they've they got to beat them here. And I, there's a possibility. You never know. I feel like that's BS, Perch. I mean, these guys won TI. Every single eye in Dota is on them. So what do you do when you're facing a tier two Chinese team? No, you, nothing. You just screw around. You wait till the beat international when you start bringing out the big tier LAN strats. It's, you wait till friendship, <laughs> dedication, and love to pull out your real strategy. Yes. Is that what you're saying? FDL is trying to stop them, and it's time for Wings to get back in that TI flavor. The oh, eyes are going to be on them no matter what now. So it's time you know to bring what? out the guns. Wings and there they are. They're Sandstorm to... first. <laughs> Sand King. I, I think oh. what's actually most likely is Wings moderately tries drafting. Like, I don't think they'll pull out any of their new stuff mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. game. I think they'll go for something that they think they can consistently win, and then if they're down next game, then they're going to try real hard. No. You don't want to be in the loser bracket this tournament. No. Sure that. Dude, best of one lower bracket, one of the scariest things in Dota. Indeed. Dota is not a best of one game. But uh, one of the things we need to mention here, FDL, there's been a little change of pace. Suzy, aka 747, he's got the crown. Uh, he's he's drafting right now. It's been Stan King historically, and that, that's a big change for this team. Very recent one as well. Yeah, um, FDL have not really had too much of uh, drafting. Like, what's the word? Domination? Variance? Diversity? Oh, yeah, hero yeah, diversity. They're, 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 like, they, you just see kind of the same drafts from them routinely, and I don't really feel like they have expanded that strategy too much. Like, if, say I watch NP, right? I watch NP pick Spen Invoker every single time in the American Qualifier they could, and over and over and over again. But yeah. we know they have, like, five, six different, like, various strategies that they have in their back pocket. I don't feel like the same sort of thing for FDL. Um, I feel like it's the same general heroes that they're going to be picking up. Wings are the exact opposite. They yeah. do anything. Wings yeah. can draft everything. They can make anything work. Yeah. They picked up techies yeah. on the main stage. I at, saw at them. TI. You know, it's like... Yep. We're sitting right next to him. One of their drafter guy just took out a D20 and rolled. I mean, I, it was terrifying. Homie doesn't know what he's got going on. It's pretty sick. He's been Mom. watching too much Dungeons so, and Dragons. So what you're saying in order to win TI, they just got critical hit after yeah. critical hit. Is that oh, what happened? Shit, 20 pick life stealer guys. We did it. Modbax, what are you thinking about these? Uh, anything interesting you can tell us about FDL? Well, just kind of going off of that whole draft diversity too. One of the people that actually plays the most heroes for them is Visa, mm -hmm. but in the first phase we already got this life stealer picked up. So um, up against the Batrider, kind of surprising maybe that we don't see that, of course, well-loved Stan King Oracle. Maybe it won't get banned out here and they'll still have a chance to go for it. Um, they might feel that it'll, it'll still be good enough based on whatever heroes they're pairing it up with and well, it'll be a silencer ban instead. But yeah, um, like Visa and Shadow, I find, actually share quite a few characteristics in terms of like, the heroes they play and the way they build and stuff like that too. Like we see a lot of that Lincoln's Void coming out from Visa too. Yep. Um, and uh, like right now I've seen a lot of like Lincoln's Weaver as well from Wings. So I, th I think they grab the Life Stealer though just because they it gives you a Batrider advantage in yeah, laning. Exactly. Uh, something that um, SVG mentioned to me. Um, you have to just rage off the Napalms if he ever really does go for fire, Firefly and Escape. If you can get within range of open wounds it guarantees your supports can also do enough damage rather than the typical Batrider flies of a cliff mm -hmm. or something into trees to juke. So. Yeah. And one of the strategies against FDL you always have to look out for slacks. Good old fashioned position one vengeful spirit. We saw it in game three. NP played it. FDL. They play it more than anyone else in this tournament. I think in the last 30 days they've run it nine times, something like that. It, it's a lot, and it's Ooh. almost always position one if they pick Venge. So something. You to see, this keep is there. why FDL is going to win this. Why they're the only team that can beat Wings is because Wings hasn't researched them. Everybody else here, their but, games are out there. These guys don't know those classic picks that everyone else has already learned to ban against. I mean, you them do know else. that they can use the Dota client to see what FDL has they been could, doing in the past, right? But who Maybe would? they don't have a Chinese version of that Dota. It's the Fire uh, or Dota buff. Okay. Or whatever That's right. you choose. Each everyone's working yeah. right now. Indeed. So, they're weakest against FDL, whose replays are probably the hardest to find. Think about it, Bird. 
Wings Gaming. Which, actually, so isn't it the opposite? Deal with that, isn't seriously? isn't Wings the team that's like hard to, to read well, right now because the they were on the boat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lost to time. Having <laughs> space somewhere, those bots. Down in Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> yeah. Well, they take the Murano away from Wings at least, so they won't be able to get the, the AoE damage with Fatal Bonds. Yeah. I it's mean, that actually had a huge impact in that other game. Yeah, so they picked Venno right here. And they're also going to lane him against Razor very likely. That way, if he does a static link, you just leap away. Okay. That's my expectation. Mm. Wings playing Venno. I don't know if I've seen that, but he's he's hot stuff right now. I... Oh, that was just their class. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Was it Slacks? <laughs> no, oh, yeah, was... dude. Oh, then it was no. a smart idea if yeah. it wasn't Slacks. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah. No what? problem. Wings uh, plays Venno all the time. They have one of the best Venno players on their stack, bro. Slacks, they 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 yeah. were picking. I mean, they were picking Venno a lot at like ESL Manila. You're like, you're a few months, like seven months. Are you kidding me? Venno's hot right now. Talk to RTZ if you don't think Venno's hot right now, bro. Is Venno hot right now for Wings though? Uh, we're about to find out because they practice that shit on the cruise ship. Really... I was there. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the missing link we needed. <laughs> I was the one man who came back, the Amelia Earhart of Dota. <laughs> Went over there, got lost. Here I am. I do, like, I do like the Weaver ban from FDL, though. That's something Trent and I were talking about yesterday that Wings has been playing a lot of Weaver recently. It's really good against Lifestealer, mainly. Yeah, that yeah. too. The, oh, you open wounds, I'll just max movement speed. <laughs> See, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The Have problem is there's so there? many heroes that are good versus Lifestealer. Yeah. You pick it yeah. one, two, and then you don't pick up your, uh, like, a scaling mid. So they banned away Weaver and Juggernaut, Admiral both good Tom versus Lifestealer. But there's still Razor, there's still Sven, there's still all these heroes out there that Wings could pick up that are good versus the Life Stealer. So it means your one position is is very ineffective versus a draft, just straight up. So you, then you are forced into a situation where it's like, okay, we got to snowball, we got to get these pickoffs, we got to have, have a big net worth advantage to be able to beat them because inherently the heroes matched up against Life Stealer beat. There's still Ursa out in the pool. There's all those heroes, right, that are still there. Yeah. That, that's why I'm not a big fan of the, the Marana pickup because I don't feel Marana skills well enough. Like, and you are so incentivized just to, like, try and win at 15 minutes. Yep and continue to win at 20 and 25 and close out the game by 35. It all comes back to Batrider too. I mean, as Purge said, like you are looking for those heroes that are good against the Napalm stacks in the lane. If you're not going to have someone like this Oracle there with the uh, Fortune's End, you look for your Life Stealers, your Slyrex, your Juggernauts or something. But picking up this early and reducing that potential out of Bisa, who, again, is someone who has kind of carried a lot of their game. Like him and Suzy have looked spectacular. Uh, you know, everyone else is enabling them. But when you have a hero that is open so early Sky to all these different the... counters, it's I'm Whoa. pretty worried. Skyrath. Oh. Very good at zoning Batrider. Um, I would say it's very yeah. terrible against Razor, though. Um, not a good support in that sense, because every time you cast a spell on him, he's going to slow you back. Yeah. yeah. But um, it does give them good trial and potential, and I think that's maybe one place that they need to, that they're going to try to do at least. Kunkka Warlock is kind of scary, but their setup's bad, so yeah. depending on what carry Wings gets, it could give FDL trial lane advantage, which I think is something they've been trying to work for this whole time. Yeah. With the Marana counter to the he's Razor the and Life Stealer being okay against Bat Rider, they want to be able to win that trial lane. Yeah. Dangerous part is though that Razor could easily work in a trial lane as well. That's so true. they could actually pick up a different mid uh, for Wings to match up against the Marana and then match the Razor against the Life Stealer trial lane if they wanted to. That's the kind of curveball that Wings would throw. Mm -hmm. Not many teams will do that. I feel like Skywrath I've seen mostly pick to counter Timber Saw. That's what I always think of with a, a Skywrath pick. He just shuts down the Timber Saw, magic damage, silence, all that good stuff. But oh yeah, that not, makes sense. Not going to be the case here. Hmm. You know who's a great mid in this game? Who? Venomancer. A lot of burst damage, a lot of poison. That's an interesting suggestion, Slacks. I don't think I've heard that one before. Okay. For which team? That's, that's a good question. <laughs> that's, that is the question. That's the $100,000 Canadian question right there. I, know. I also, believe Wings would have an opening in mid, potentially. I'm not sure if FDL really do. They can roam around with the Marana and pick up a different mid, I guess. Uh, Pretty bad setups, though. Yeah. Overall. Not, not great setups, but maybe he just plays that roaming where he just kills neutral. Yeah, they ban out the Dusa. Interesting. Team well, they're very, like, hard set on initiation, right? And Medusa is the hard counter to uh, initiation focused drafts that are very, like, mm -hmm. tempo based that try and go, go, go. Because you pop that ultimate, it's like fight's over. You have to back out, reinitiate. Life Stealer's terrible Ten at reinitiating. Uh, yeah. Sand King's, you know, he's full committal. Um, Brawn is a little bit, Five you know, commitment. Skyrath Mage, full committal. So you would have, you'd be very hard pressed to be able to back out and re engage. 
So that's why I thought Warlock Strength was. Isn't he kind of the the go-to counter initiator now? Everybody pops on me, gets the golems, and then. I mean, the golems are nice, but it's more of a interrupt. It's it's so long range that it kind of interrupts the tempo that your opponents are planning to do okay. with initiation and allows you to do stun setups afterwards. Yeah, and stuff like that. And there's also of... varying degrees of, of resets, right? Like Naga Siren, that's a hard reset. It stops the fight. Medusa is somewhere in the middle there, where she stops the fight, but it's you know you can Ooh. still continue. What the hell? Nature's prophet. MJW hero. Ooh. Okay. One of his classics. Tell us about it, buddy. Why is he good? I don't know. He's just he's a madman. Goes in that off lane, rocks the prophet. So. I mean, this is going to be one where they know exactly what they're doing, or they have well, no idea. I hear you on beat that, right? It's by spamming Triant at him. Uh, in lane, I Early. feel like pre-level pre, pre -level 3, yes, yeah. because then your your Firefly is still pretty weak. But, yeah. Um, I, I mostly see this as FDL wants to, like, crap on the lanes, and that's the only way they win this, because Bat, in some yeah. ways, is also the counter to MP. As is Kunkka in some ways, there's there's they can easily cancel a split push, at least, so um, it'll probably be NP taking a 1v1, and he'll just oh, What? What? Like it. The Wolfman like coming. What in the world is Boys this? and girls, this is one hell of a game one draft here for this series. Um, Welcome to Wings Gaming. <laughs> Lightskin was a classic counter to Lifestealer because he ignores the um, he ignores the slow. He's got a lot of physical damage um, to be able to rip apart the Lifestealer. Um, can't really be kited at all. Uh, I, I like this pickup. It's just lichen has been out of the meta, and that's the only reason you don't like it. All right, gang. Because it doesn't feel strong. We need quick predictions, and we got to give it over to our casters. Oops. Yeah, as you can see, it's time for the casters. <laughs> we got to go. Who's taking game one? Quickly. Lycan, Team Wings, let's go. All right, I got to go Wings. I'm going to go Wings, too, because I, th I think Skyrath is going to be pretty useless. Like yeah. game two. I'm going to go Wings, because they're Wings. They could have drafted all five Intelligence heroes, and I probably would have said Wings. And you're going FDL, right? No, no, come with us yeah. on Wings. Yeah, Pisa, let's go. Yeah. All right, FDL. Well, right. there sorry, you have it. Packs. There yeah, you have that's it. what happens here at the end of the couch. Rip Mod Packs. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got casters for this series. It's going to be Mod again, but this time joined by the wondrous Grand Grant. Oh. Here with me here for game number one between FDL as well as Wings. It's quite the David versus Goliath story. Grant, we have some interesting picks. What do you think, buddy? I don't know. The MJW on the Furion. We're going to have Lycan on the side of Wings. It could be interesting. It seems like a throwback to old FDL when they were winning games looking like a... A, a tier two and a tender, yeah. And I, I think this is a good pick. Go yeah. back to what worked for them. Yeah, they have the MGW on that nature's profit. Obviously, the, the most interesting thing is going to be the the liking, which we I don't think we've seen in the competitive scene, at least not recently. I don't think there's been any picked heroes of liking. I I can't think of any off the top of my head. And so. it is going to be middle. Yeah, it's a middle liking, which is very interesting. Uh, he gets his fast levels. Obviously, hope we can get a a couple of fast items going his way, but. This is going to be interesting. What do you do against this Lycan? Can you rotate on him? Can you try to find different, you know, have the, the Furion TP in and look for a Sprout or something to bring down this Lycan? I think something like that. You rotate in a Furion, then you have the Sky right there just throwing Qs before he suicides to neutrals early game. You just got to shut him down. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be easy for FD. Obviously, we talked about it. They're they're clearly the underdogs in this series. They are a, a team. They're they're on the cusp of the Tier 2, Tier 1 barrier in North America. Yeah. They're one of those teams that obviously they beat NP to get here. NP looked very good in that last series. So you, you'd imagine FDL a pretty solid team, but this is not an easy match. This is the TI winners, obviously. Blues has been doing very well. Burrow strike on to two. Nice to jump from 04 still. There's going to be the static link coming out. 747 seven, able to get away, but maybe not. He's going to have to use his leap. He skills it up early on. The uphill miss comes out. That was going to be a lot of damage from Shadow. Luckily enough, they do miss it. So. Yep. And he did get the rune. 747 seven somehow juked around the torrent and picked up the rune. So he had to skill leap, though, meaning he won't be able to just arrow the range creep, which is huge because a Lycan with a Quelling Blade is going to outlast Hitter. Yeah. It's going to be tough. One. Yeah, it's going to be rough for him early. Yeah, Susie will have a tough time more than likely in this bin lane. But it is an aggro trial in from Wings. What do you feel about this this off lane coming out for uh, this Wings squad? It's going to be pretty easy for Shadow to just link and do stuff like he's doing right there, and then they just throw out a torrent. But when Link's down and his damage is lower, that's when they're going to have to go, and they're going to have to get good pulls from uh, the 0-4 Sand King. Yeah, it's not going to be easy with Wings contesting the pull camp with them being aggressive. You can already see Ice Ice walking up on the Kunkka just trying to be a nuisance here. This will leave that 1v1 matchup that we thought about, the Batrider versus the Nature Prophet in that top lane, which is what Purge and Cap were talking about pre-level 3, the Nature Prophet yep. having a good time for the most part. And just make two sets of trees, and you just send them on the Batrider, and... Hope to harass a little, or you just do what MJW is doing. He's just trying to farm. Yep, and there's the tree and hitting him. Yeah. You just have to avoid four to five stacks. He can always TP out of it now, especially because uh, 
the W does not yeah, cancel no point break cancel. Yeah, which is good. He's just going to do that now. He, he has to go all the way back home because look at that was only a couple of ticks of Firefly, but that's still enough to push MJW back home. He had those four stacks like you were talking about. And already the, the Bat Rider taking control of this lane. In fact, Wings are winning just about every lane. I mean, there's only one CS advantage going the way of the Lycan mid, but you still have four last hits going for Shadow. It's still very close down in this bottom lane, but it does look like they're starting to accrue it a, a small advantage for Wings side. It does. It seems like FDL does that a lot. They they don't necessarily sack Biza, but he is almost always the one getting the least amount of farm. You'll see 747 and MJW get more farm than him because he almost always gets tri lane. Yeah. It seems. It, it works for them a lot of time. He's supplying the carry. Blinken, 747 go toe to toe. The new addition, MDW in the top lane taking some rats. But obviously, 747, a very solid mid laner. Uh, I think a lot of people outside of America don't really know who he is. Um, he's played for a couple of different teams. He's stood in for a lot. I mean, he's been around the North American scene for a while now, I believe. Yes, I remember he was at. He's, he has LAN experience. ESL New York last yeah, time. He yep. played for Archon. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, once again, they, they want to get that LAN win, though. Here Again, we go. It's going to be an x Mark Scorn to start things off here. They will catch out Stan King, the leader of the captain of the team, or at least one of them. Ice Ice will get the first blood, so it's just like that easy torrent comes through. Shadow with his right click, and then that's enough damage for them to secure the kill. Yep, that's going to be rough. Zero four is just a little bit outside of the lane, and they knew that with the ward they had down. And they just rotated onto the Skyrath. That's all it takes. This is not an easy lane coming out for FDL. I mean, they have to be very wary of their positioning. There's an Observer War for the Dire, but it's actually, I think, blocking the camp yeah, currently. Yeah, blocking the camp, and yeah. they cannot counter it yet. But they do see they keep the 0-4, like, running back and forth below it. Like, oh, we can just go on him when he goes by it. Yeah, zero four 4 is going to have to be very wary. Again, they will have the wave pushed out, so again, more experience in gold. Meanwhile, the Bat Rider very low in that top lane. He actually has to go back home as MGW puts a lot of pressure I think Faithion might have been juggling too a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he might have just been in that top lane also. It looks like it, yeah. Yep. That's interesting, because MJW normally plays a little more playmaking, like, wow, I can stun you, do some damage here, but he's going to be having to teleport around the map, trying to pick up, like, make these 3v3 fights bottom 4v3. I mean, that's what a Furion's really good at. And that's what Wings have to be careful these next couple of moments. They... And you won't probably see a gank on mid. I, I mean, you can send those two heroes, 747 and, and MW, on to blink. But the problem is that you can't send any of the supports. If they leave that lane, that's going to be even harder yep. for PC. He's already getting little to no farm as it stands. So he might rotate to the jungle soon. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ice Ice rotating around with the smoke of the sea gank. Boots up, Windlace as well, very speedy. Uh, Kunko, he'll head towards the top rune spot, perhaps looking for MW, who's going to back himself away towards that creep camp to farm up. Ice Ice still deciding where he wants to go. I think he just wanted to secure the four-minute room before heading into the top lane. A little slow laning phase, but now we see the uh, Priest of the Moon actually doing extremely good middle. 25 yeah, wow. and 8. I mean, once he gets the star falls up, he can yeah. just star storm out star storm. Level 3 star storm is, is when you start really getting your farm. Yep. You get harass and all the creeps. Now we see they're going on the Razor. This should be a kill. Yeah, so the they have the burrow strike as well for 04 to start things off, and they just can't heal him up in time. And since was there, but with level 2 shadow word and all of that damage coming up from FDL, they do pick up. That's a huge kill on a Razor. Yeah, it is. It's huge. Yeah, and there we go. Like they said, a 4v, what, a 3v3 into a 4v3. That's the good thing about uh, Nature's Prophet. Yeah. You can always make a. A losing fight into a winning fight. I just, I feel like I've never seen this here. Like, we saw him once in Elimination Mode, but that's obviously very different. Nature's yeah. Prophet's been out of the meta for, like, a long yeah, time. Yeah, I think Complexity's fixed it once, so maybe and FDL saw something they liked out of that, and they're like, well, All MJW right. used to play quite a bit, so. I mean, this is definitely a comfort hero, for sure. Yeah, it is. And so far, one-to-one, -one, they have killed the Razor, and they've only lost the support, so that's good. And we're going to see rotation from 0-4 and Stan King now. Yeah, they're going to look to find something here. They'll rotate through mid lane to help out 747 for the time being. There's nobody mid currently as Blink, I believe, is farming up the jungle. Yep. He might come back mid right now as we speak. 04 is looking for the top root spot, seeing if anybody's there. Blink is just going to go deeper into the hard camp. Meanwhile, another rotation on the, the dire side as Shadow's going to come back mid. They do have, they have the, war the Warlock nearby, but obviously not level 6. They're going to rotate in. Shadow rather speedy, but there's the concussive shot. The burst trick as well. Arrow's going to fly. The Shadow Ward isn't enough. The Star Storm will bring him down. Great rotation from FDL. They rotate in Faith Beyond. He can't find anything. They also forced another TP out, which is canceled almost instantly from Wings there. And that was strange. They had a ward on the top rune. It just wore off right now. They saw after the smoke pop the the Sand King and that, but that was a great kill. Once again, the uh, Nature's Prophets putting in work, just TPing in, securing the kill. I mean, this is... It's a small advantage for FDL. It's yeah. still early on in the game, but already you can see Wings not getting off to the best start, even after they got that first blood down bottom. Yep, we see gold and experience advantage going their way, and that's because Visa 
has been left alone. Bottom now, he's he's like, oh, phew. I get farm now. That, that laning phase almost already over. I'll take it at six minutes. Last tower. hits coming out. 30 attack. coming out for the life stealer. 37 for Blink. 38 for the Rana. So Blink, of course, a lot of these are going to be jungle creeps going his way, but he's still farming rather well. Yes, he um, is. And Visa, of course, sitting at phase currently. Stout shield, coiling blade. He's just going to get up to his armlet as quickly as he can. I don't know. This looks pretty good for FDL because MGW also has his phase boots ready yep. to go. Exactly, and I think that's why they rotated the Razor up top now. They're like, oh, wow, Visa can... He can just go on us with a lifestealer, yep. and they can make it an unfair fight. Yeah. So it's working out perfectly for him after that uh, little bit. I mean, at least it was just your support dying first blood. Still first blood, yeah. but could have been worse. It definitely could have. Faith Beyond, of course, one of the best offlaners in Dota currently. I mean, TI, we saw him perform outstandingly. You know, the past couple of tournaments in general, he's already up to 1,000 gold. Yep. He's got his Tranquil. His Blink Dagger should be relatively well-timed, I think, for him. Yeah, definitely. I think that's crazy at this line. I think we have, like, three of the best offlaners. Yeah. Universe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Faith Beyond, even MSS moving up there now. It's it's an offlaner yeah. patch again. It used to not be, and it, it kind of moved back again. This was without Clockwork, without uh, Dark yeah. really in the meta. Both yep. of those heroes are just garbage. Yep. I mean, Universe actually plays Clockwork he's a fair bit. Trying, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to make it work, guys. A lot of the time he does, although it's with the help of his team. Yep. Oh. I mean, and he's Universe too. Arrow's going to come through mid. 747 is going to miss on that one. It was the just getting farmed casually. Um, are you okay with the fact that, you know, wings are getting farmed in the jungle? I mean, they're not really moving around the map. They're not making much happen. Are you okay with how they're playing right now? Uh, I'm surprised. They're pretty much giving free farm to Biza and 747, but obviously they have a plan. I mean, you pick Lycan, you know he's not going to dominate middle. He can fall back in the jungle. Good, and he's going to gank bottom now, and yeah. MJW, this is going to be tough to get out here. X marks Torrent's going to come through. This should be a kill. They don't rotate anybody up here. They know MJW is going to die. Good attempt on that TP, but it's just a wait to 50 gold, as well as the cooldown. Nicely played from wings, and they'll turn this into a tier one tower push top lane. Yep, and that's it. They, they had a wolf inside those trees. It's almost impossible to TP out of that. They have X, Torrent, and, just, and they have plenty of vision from the Trance route with the uh, Razor. Yeah, too much damage to deal with. TPs are coming through on mass. You have 04 coming in with a Burrow Strike ready. They have the Infest Bomb up. They're going to look for one. There's going to be a Fused Raindrop. Link's still very tanky. Shadow, Static, they have to back away. 04 just goes to his death. The Marauders is here. Here's the Moonlight Shadow Plasma Field. Starstorm, they'll at least take down the Warlock. Shadow, Nature's Breath, Blink Forward, oh. double kill for 747. As soon as he gets it done, Nothing. it'll back away underneath the guise of that tier one tower. Yep, perfect, like, defensive and aggressive use of the Moonlight Shadow. They didn't see him ro uh, rotating back in after the arrow, and Warlock was an easy kill, and then, because he went the phase boot instead of brown boot build, he was able to bring the Razor down. That was a good rotation. Almost looked like 0-4 died for nil, but yeah. they rotate in, and a huge fear on all, like, even without being there, he provides something. And there also was a double damage rune for the Marana. She might yeah. not have gotten that kill had not had that not I been there. I don't think she would have, yeah, that, she was doing a ton of damage, so... That's good, and we're going to see the drum build for Nature's Prophet. Just give him some movement, be able to just get around the map. Yeah, this is uh, kind of an action-packed game. TP's top again. The Burrow Strike 04 will connect on this one. Concussive shot. There's the silence as well. X marks will go, though. There's the leap forward from 747. Not quite where he wanted to go. The Sprout, he does chew his way through with the Quelling Blade. And I think that's the end of the chase. 747 just trying to plank away with the Arcane Rudy as the Star Storm back up and ready to go. But they do defend that Tier 1 Tower top again. Yep, that's good. Uh, I think 747 just forgot about the Quelling Blade because he just arrowed straight in the middle of the trees. Maybe if he knew the Quelling Blade, he could have shot a little more to the right, but... They're going back yeah. in. 747 lasts it up. They catch him mid leap. Firefly, Ghost Ship. This should be a dead Marauder, and it is. Not expecting the Batrider. That was without a Blink Dagger. He comes right in without it. Yep. And it's more than enough to get the kill. Windlace Tranquil. Plenty of movement speed items now. Yeah. He's up to 1,200 gold. They'll take the c one Tower with the light and getting it. That's... That's a lot of gold going the way of wings, those past two uh, engagements. The, the Marauder going down the Tier 1 Tower top lane. Yes, Beast is getting far mid, but... I don't know if it's really a worthy exchange for FPL here. The thing is, Visa gets farm, he could just get Batrider lassoed, and then Razor just right clicks something, and Static Link goes through it. It's Life Door's gonna have a, pro uh, a lot of trouble this game, so. I mean, getting farms obviously good on your carry, but. They have to have really solid counter initiation, and usually that's gonna be from the Sand King here. Yep. And with him dying, his his, his Blink Dagger, I, I, I would imagine, is not very close to completion. Yep. Marana's gonna have to get that. Getting closer to Aghanim, still about. 3,000 off exactly, and I, I think they just need him to go farm that. Well, still a lot uh, at stake in this game. Very early on, very even game for the most part. Uh, the blink like in mid, obviously, a little bit surprising. He's currently top the net worth, which almost to be expected for how much he can farm the jungle. Yep. And of course, pushing early on. And they go for the drums build on the Batrider, by the way. Yep, so they do the same thing. 
both off laners do, but on him, yeah, we saw he didn't even need to blink for that last, so they're just going to be probably 5v5, and Wings can just run at you, and FPL doesn't have the best, like, defense. They have a Sand King, and then, I mean, Furion's not that great in 5v5, and these are his life steal early. Yeah, it's it's really about getting that advantage in numbers, is what you were talking yeah. about, bringing that nature profit, making the 3 uh, three versus 3 into a 4 versus 3. Wings will go ahead and smoke up early on here. They'll go to beeline it down towards the, I think, Radiant Jungle. They could go to Roche, but I doubt it. And they, in fact, will invade FDL's jungle at this point. It looks like Skyrath is going to be the first to be caught. They have the lasso. Good concussive shot. Playbrick pushes him forward, but they have the X marks. The Torn will connect, and Stanky is done. They even cancel the TP as 0-4 split pushing top. They had a double damage rune on Blank, so fighting into that is very difficult. Is so, that Roche now, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Uh, with the double damage rune, with the amount of damage they have, there is a Treant in there, and the Skyrath Mage is back up in six seconds. I don't know if they can contest this. This might be one of those good old tier one tower top trades for Roche. They have on. DD, so if they didn't have DD, I don't think they could do Roche, but likely Lycan does. But I think FDL's fine. They know Lycan's going to eventually take Roche down reasonably quick. Yeah. And the Smoke Gang only killed Stan King again. Like, yeah. They're fine with him taking that gang. They do have to get that tier one, though. We'll see if and they already do. So. Yeah, they'll, they'll bring that tier one tower down top lane. They'll get some extra weight pushed into the top lane. I mean, this is the, probably one of the most standard trades in all of Dota. Take yeah. a tier one tower top in the radius. Or the tier two top, yeah. It's yeah. like, just that and Roche. You're good. Yep. So Wings know that they're going to be able to get this. Meanwhile, bottom, Faith Beyond did a lot of damage to Skyrath with that Moonlight Shadow. They did dust, and they actually caught him. Ice, Ice, can he get this x marks off? It looks like Stan King is going to walk right back into them. And it should be a kill here. Stan King walking into his demise. The Torrent will come out with Faith Beyond. Should be more than enough to get the kill. It will be the Batrider picking it up at the last right click. However, top lane, they are pushing rather aggressively. The wow. tier two taking a lot of damage. 747 not packing from the plasma field. They have gold, but no mana for for innocence. That's crazy. They almost they almost got a tier one and tier two. That would have been super worth it. Stan King is like yeah. all according to plan. Yep, oh, whatever. My life means nothing anymore. <laughs> So they will take the tier one, or at least they'll attempt to as 04 TP's in. Blink is going to go ahead and use his shapeshift. They do have plenty of damage here. The ghost ship's going to come through 04, getting caught the X marks back. 04 has caught himself into trouble, but they have the infest. The last one coming out now as well. Can they bring this hero down? Face beyond, taking a lot of damage, but he's not done yet. They're looking to turn this. Here comes Blink back in. They'll find Visa. He's done. And now 747 has to leap away. The shapeshift doing massive work for Blink. Ice Ice taking a lot of damage. That rum again. Just helping them out so much there. That buff just went away literally a half second ago. Yep, and we see Biza trying to armlet toggle. You can armlet toggle Firefly, though. No, and that that's is, not going to work. That's rough. This, this Nyx is going to just have a rough time all game now. That was just too... I, it felt like they should have just given up that tower, I think. Maybe done something else before going in a yep. little too hard. Maybe overestimating the amount of damage. Maybe and again, the, the ghost ship coming out doing so yeah. much work in terms of the rum. They did see two top, and maybe that's why they saw the Warlock as well as plus one defending tier two, and they maybe they felt confident in that fight. And mm -hmm. Now Wings just has a, a decent gold advantage as well as net worth. We see Lycan just getting built up. He's going to be hard to kill, especially with I mean, Quelling Blade being able to cut down trees. And Visa going down. I mean, his net worth is already relatively low yeah. at this point in time. It's going to be even further. And we talked about him not getting the best amount of farm in the early game. He's not transitioning very well. Obviously, not necessarily his fault. Yeah. Um, but this is the part where, you know, it was a little bit disconcerting for, for Wings in the early stage of this game, but now it's kind of shaping up to be exactly what we expected yeah. it to. Yep, so an interesting laning phase now. They're just going to be looking for pickups. They have X marks, they have Blink Lasso. He's even got a mech almost down on his Kunkka too, so they have just about all the items they uh -oh. need to start fighting. Faith Beyond is in the tree line here. No Blink Tag or Firefly first. Eh, he's just scouting things out. And that looks for 747. He sees him now. There's the drum pop, the lasso, oh. the oh, the leap just narrowly. They will catch up the torrents there and plenty of damage again. Wow. Nicely done. That was insane. The leap getting caught right by the lasso. Now another tier one. Is that another double damage? Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, yep it is. He has gone three, though. Yeah, he's. That's pretty, they can take a tier two easy now. feeling pretty good. They also have the Necrobook flying out as we speak yeah. on top of that. I think the whole no ags on Marana. I know it's 15 minutes. So that's still pretty early, but now they don't have that. They don't have, like, any anti push because you have a support Sand King, so he doesn't have the level to, like, Caustic Finale stun in and do that now. There's gonna get pushed down. Yeah, really I mean, hard. this is exactly what Lycan like, excels at. I mean, there's an AD prop on the other side. They can try to split push as best as they can. Uh, you can see O4 is currently doing that top lane. I think Wings are going to just play this smart. They're gonna push out all the ways they can, take the towers as quickly as they can. They still have ages for another two uh -oh. minutes on top of that. Oh, uh, get out of here. F04 is gonna bro strike away. I, I don't nice. know if he was spotted. He's fine in general, so. The Pinu song was coming up top, and well, Zero Four is getting close to his lane. Surprisingly, he is only about 300 gold away. Middle, though, 747 again getting voted. No ship, yeah, that should be more than enough to get the kill. 
Uh, he's died too many times in a row. I feel like he's died four or five times just to that combo. Maybe maybe only three, but it still feels like it's been a lot. And he, you could just see the net worth chart just go more and more in favor of Wings. The top three are currently going to be that Razor, that Bat Rider, as well as that Lycan. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, to be expected. Yeah, and uh, 747 was sitting at second place for a while. Now those, yeah, those two deaths just, they, they needed him to get that early yeah. axe, and now it's going to be super late. Now they're just going to have to hope for the Sand King Blink and picking up uh, some big kills. I mean, is that the only thing they have to hope for? Because it feels like Beast doesn't have much farm. MG's, yeah. MGW's not doing that much. Because he's pretty much, I mean, the Sand King and the 747 are pretty much the only two who can clear out waves. And that's what they need. I mean, they can kind of delay with MJW in the trees, but that's it. Yeah, it's going to be a game of potential rap from FDL. Good team fights that they desperately need. But again, they're very far behind this like, and it's starting to get huge. 10k net worth almost. He's got his Necro 2 now done. And he's on his way to his Necro 3, which is very soon. Uh, it, it just feels like they it's starting to get a little out of control here for FDL right now, Grant. It is, and we see Moran trying to farm top, and they got to watch out. This uh, Moran just always has to be uh, scared of ganks. and But they're just pushing bottom, so maybe Moran can get a little bit of farm up here. They're going to lose a tier 2. I don't think you defend this. No. There's no way you do. No, I don't, I don't think so. Let's push 2. Back up. Yeah, that's... You're not fighting that. I mean, they what they've done the entire game is like TP 4 in front. He throws strikes. But that, he's died like every time he's done Yeah, that. I'm really surprised he actually is this close to his point. Yeah. A rough game for the Sanky. Pretty much a rough game from the entirety of FDL at this yep. point. They, they will do their best to push out waves. You talked about the Agonim Center from Marana. She's still one component away. 747, those three deaths really hurting. And, uh, I mean, I'll, again, Wings just need to keep these waves pushed out, play intelligently, and they should be able to take objectives without any real issues here. Yeah, exactly. Let me see. Life's still going for the Echo Saber now. Just, they need to be able to burst somebody down. But now with Wings having Boat and Rock, how can you fight them 5v5? They have the rum, they have the, the best AoE in the game. I feel like you have to blow up one of these supports very quickly before they get their abilities off. But if you don't, if you kill one, you don't kill the other, then it's like Ghost Ship comes out or Chaotic yeah. Offering comes out. Uh oh. 747 getting chased down. He'll TP out, he will be successful. He also gets the tower destroyed. No denies. Wings were TPing in and got there in time, but did not deny it. Yeah, now he has his eggs in about two neutral camps or middle if he wants to farm. Oh, just don't die. Please don't die. 747, you really need that. Oh, they're, yeah, they're going to go for a gank, actually. They're going, they're playing aggressive and looks like bad and like, and maybe they know something's up. They're just, oh, we're going to the jungle yeah, with our team. There. But bottom lane, harassed him by trees. Yeah, the trees will fall before Ooh. they get the tower. It's very close. 34 HP. He could just go get right, just right click it. Oh, four, I think they're going to go for it. Dagger. Yeah. He's just going to hit it once. That's dead. Yep, he's, he's gonna might go down and get it. Yep, there we go. Alright, they give us the life dealer. Control things. 747's like, I wanted that, but except he was in the, the, the jungle. Yeah, so. Skyrath was up there too. They were all just like, we need that tower. And that is an Aghanim now for the Marana. That's right, huge. Did it. I, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Obviously, we see an Aghanim scepter on Marana yeah. to turn, turn fights around. And it's also very good for pushing too, which yep. again, they have a very good pushing lineup as it stands to, to reason. And look at, we see MJW doing the fear on thing, uh, splitting up top. Just cutting yeah, the creep wave, yeah. that's that's what you have to do. It's like a tinker, where he's sitting now. Yeah. And he almost has a maelstrom, so he's just gonna, that's what he's gonna do, TB around, just be as annoying as possible. Yeah. That's it. I'll pick up the pipe, uh, Shadow grabbing that, the nat resistance build for a lot of heroes, especially core heroes. We saw Envy build, like, pipe, like, three games in a row or so. Oh, he loves pipe Terrorblade, pipe Razor, pipe every whoever you want. Yeah. Lasso, they found a target, and this time it is going to be the life dealer, big one. Chaotic offering going, they don't want his rage to go. They're waiting for the rest of his team to get here. Beast is still rather tanky, he's wanting to kill this golem. X marks back to the ghost ship. He actually misses, Beast is going to turn his attention to Innocent. He'll invest into a creep, they will try to take it down. It's one of them that's still alive. Meanwhile, top tier three is getting pushed in pretty heavily. They aren't going to find this group, not yet anyway. Still though, they're making so much space. This Rax, this melee Rax is about to go down. Good burrow strike, but it's not enough. Back to Visa, chewing down Ice Ice, actually might fall here, pops the drop guard, pops the mech. They will get Blink out of there as he was still pushing top. They're gonna try to fight this, another X marks going in. Beast is caught out, he will fall. Try to toggle, can't get it off in time. The dust goes as well to make sure that Moonlight Shadow won't get him away. 747 also perhaps in trouble here. No dust connecting on him. Starstorm barely doing any damage. The infused brain drops just the natural tankiness of Shadow with that pipe up. Now make some trance, meanwhile jumping in again. Face on this time finds 747. The torrent, the leap away in time isn't enough. He's so low. One more right click might bring him down. He's sitting at 6 HP. Barely survives, but his rack will not be so lucky. His wings will take down the first set of the game at 20 minutes in.
Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised how long Beza lasted there. He got ganged middle, and then they were just kind of maybe toying with him, so he couldn't go back you and defend. You can't go back to your yep. base. It's fine. We'll just take your racks. They were letting him, and then they almost get a pick off again, but Wings escapes. No harm done, and they take a whole set of racks. There's just a severe lack of damage, especially with Beza going down. Even if he was yeah. alive, he might get kited against the Shapeshift, all that stuff that Wings has ready to go. They did use the Golem there, so that is on cooldown Shapeshift, obviously. The rest of the ultimates from Wings, very low cooldown. Oh, there Ooh, we go. good pick, though. MJW as well as Beza finally find a kill. It is only against the Warlock, and it's it's not that special, but at least it's something. Yeah, but I see what they're doing now. They're going to try to abuse their ward. They saw him, and now you can life steal or bomb inside of MJW. Just TP on and try to find somebody. And the Warlock, one of the few they can probably kill solo. Here they go middle. X marks. There's another gross ship coming out. MJW actually is able to get out in time. He's very speedy with the boots, but they've already lost the Scarif. Meanwhile, a lot of damage going in. The Kunkka will fall. The Burrow Strike. Can they get Blink? They have no other way to catch him. It looks like as he will be able to get out in time. That shape shift is just too difficult to deal with for FDL right now. Still, one for one trade. And they're worth more, so you'll, you'll take that for sure. If they would have brought down their Lycan, that would have been huge. a lot of gold for one kill. It is. And, oh man, Hurricane Pike. So this Razor just gets tankier, doing a little more damage, and has a pipe. They're just going to run at you, I think, when Chaotic Offerings up. They're just going to run straight when down middle. Full five on five, I don't really see yeah. any way FDL can find those pickoffs that they've found previously. Yeah, they're going to have to do a Sand King Nakes bomb and just really hope they find either the Warlock or the Kanka. These smokes have been working out somewhat well for FDL, though. We'll yeah. see if they have another one ready to go here momentarily. Yeah, we saw the burst yeah. damage when Mirana went in on that uh, Kanka. He, he dropped pretty quick. The yeah. Visa even with doing the, And that was with the rum on top, too. He yeah. used his ghost ship exactly. previously. So, not bad. And he does have. Oh, he is not. Yeah, he is. Okay. Almost a death so up on Life Stealer. But they're just going to smoke gang. They're going for something. Yeah, they oh. will find Faith Beyond perhaps. Meanwhile, they'll back up. Moonlight Shadow did go. It looks like Wings uh, have a pretty good understanding that something here is happening. Yeah. And. <laughs> yeah, nothing nothing big. Just a smoke gang. Pretty much cancel as well as the uh, Murano ult. I don't know what happened, but JJ just needed two people. I like it. All right. MJW, flip jungling. Oh god, I think you report him. I don't think you mute him. Yep. No, I'm just kidding. MJW doing what he can to get farm. It's uh, it's pretty good. I mean, you have a maelstrom. This is not like level one flip jungling. Uh, for now, FDL though, they'll split up across the map. They'll try to push the waves out again. Wings are very centered around that Roche pit, which is up and real readily available. They have Roche on at their fingertips if they want it. They were waiting possibly for Blink's BKB. Now with that again, I. <laughs> Star Storm is going to be negated if he has the BKB ready to go. So he's as long as he pops that BKB in a fight, I don't see Wing losing it really. Yeah, Life Stealer getting close to that Desolator, but they're going to be going up against the Aegis of the Immortal. This is just it. I, the there's one Rax gone in that top lane, so FDL are already getting a pushed less in. income. They are already getting pushed Dyer's in as well, like you said, and it just it's going to be furthered by you know them taking this Aegis and starting to run down mid or bottom lane or wherever they want to go. FDL are doing the best that they possibly can. I will say 747 has caught up pretty well. We already talked about the Aghanim Scepter or whatever his next item is going to be. We'll, we'll wait and see. He has a Blank Tagger now, too, which he just picked up. So he, he's got some good net worth, but is it enough to take down these tankier heroes on wings? It's going to be rough. He wants to get into the back line and just clear out the support, but who knows if he can even do enough damage to do that. If they just get Pirate Rum off or Rock off, like... Your whole decision to go for the supports is pretty much just not not a good decision. I mean, at that yeah, point, at that point if, if it's still five versus five, I feel like that's the yeah. end of the fight. If it's still, yeah. I'd say you have you have to pick one of them before the old comes out, and then hope the rest of your team kites Razor because he's just going to be zipping around with a pipe on him. Yep, very tough. MJW just foot pushing. There's this letter we talked about. There's the middle. They're just going five down middle. It looks yeah. like uh, no not... reason to be. Crazy. No, I mean, Wings are gonna. They did spoke up. They're gonna try to find this fight. Maybe Beyond has his blink four staff as well as Lasso ready to go. FDL has also spoke up. Uh oh, Burrow Strike. They find a couple here. The Lasso will go. Meanwhile, Beast is going in looking for that kill on the Willock. He sounds good for staff. They will not be able to find him. He's got Rock ready to go. And Beast is getting static. Like, they will be able to get him down with a double kill. Blink has popped the shape shift and they are just running over FDL. 747 oh. gets dropped. As a star storm, I believe, brought down the Necro Warrior, yep. the backlash came through and pretty much killed him at that point, which is unfortunate. He'll have to buy back. But it's too little too late. There's the Hurricane Pike. Shadow's gonna whip him literally a couple meters away. And uh, Wings will just start their attempt on the Tier 3 Tower. With only two heroes alive for FDL, this might very well be second set of wrecks and perhaps the game.
That's rough. They have the they tried to moonlight shadows, but they have a gem on the bat. They have book three obviously up on the light hand. They it just doesn't do anything. They just get kited around and even with the decent initiation, four steps, four steps, the ultimate counter to uh Nex. Yeah, they kited the hell out of FDL. Nobody able to chase down that warlock. Who is still rather squishy. Second set of racks down, FDL are gonna give this to the very end. Seven seconds left on the life stealer. MJW's trying to at least push this wave out, but there are other waves coming in both mid and top momentarily. They're still going to work in the tier three tower. He just does so much damage. Yeah. Without shape shift, without an AC, which will come back later. Like, Blink last of the fine 747. He just fought back, and it looks like he will fall. Scarif Age he doesn't do nearly enough damage. The ghost ship is up. They have the rum ready to go. MGW's trying to bring down Ice Ice. Meanwhile, Shadow statically beats us. Ice Ice does get the kill on MGW. The Link is up. Stan King getting destroyed. He's like, ah, oh, BG just killed me. And GG is in fact called. Game number one. Well, it's, uh, it started out pretty interestingly for FDL and Wings, but uh, Wings crush it after about 20 minutes grand. Yep. I like, I do like what FDL did in the beginning of the game. They rotated uh, the Nature's Prophet around, got a few ganks, but in the end, the uh, good rotations by Lycan to the jungle just farming up. They just got way too much farm out of the lanes, even when they weren't in them. Yeah. That's the problem. It was really just, for maybe a minute or two there, there was a 